You're listening to Rod and Style Radio, the latest podcast brought to you by RodandStyle.com, which is where you can find links for merch, videos from our YouTube channel, along with stories and tech talk from some of the greatest folks in the culture. So grab the wheel, it's about to get wild. You've tuned in to Rod and Style. Welcome to another episode of Rod and Style Radio brought to you by, who's it brought to you by? Who's the sponsor for this this week's going to be? Work Hard, Be Nice by Thurman go. Jackson Jr. <laughs> I always love putting Sam on the spot. <laughs> Jerk. Also for his moving company. Yeah, Jackson's moving company. Exactly. Um, Who we will be hiring when we move. Yeah. Exactly. We we absolutely will cuz the custom couple is looking to move. And uh but until then, uh Chuck's going to pay our bills. <laughs> and you we're going to stay now. where we're at. We're just going to keep doing podcasts to pay the bills. Uh today we've got our friend and sponsor of the custom couple, uh Messenger on. What's going on, man? Hey, what's up, guys? What have you been up to lately? Because you are constantly oh, posting on social media. I love sharing <laughs> everything that you've got, man. <laughs> uh, just late, lately, I've been melting. That's what I've been doing. It's uh, it's been 100 degrees and 200 percent humidity here in Florida, like every day. And then it it rains every evening, uh, and then immediately gets hot again. So. <laughs> yeah, you got to keep that humidity up. Right, right. <laughs> we we have that problem in San Antonio as well. Not two hundred percent or anything like that, but uh, right. San Antonio is kind of in a bowl, surrounded by hills yeah. and man-made right. lakes. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, humidity we, is we definitely a thing. Have the um, you know the breeze coming in off the ocean um, that does help a little bit. Um, of course, the shop isn't you know you know, near the beach or anything, but it's definitely close enough that we get a little bit of that breeze, but it's still been just ridiculously hot and humid. No, I, I we've endured a terrible summer, uh, in Texas. It's been, uh, just complete, you know, unbearable amounts of heat. And then we have gotten very little to no rain in some places. And it's just like, we got rained on the other day and it lasted all of three minutes and then it was gone again. <laughs> right. But man, you have been just completely busy in the shop. At least, uh, you know, every time I turn around, I'm sharing something else from one of your pages and it's just really cool, man. I, I really dig when, uh, when of course when our sponsors are very active on social media it makes our job a whole lot easier because we can just share everything that you're doing <laughs> right, right. And I, I appreciate you guys sharing and and yeah i've definitely i've definitely been swamped i'm i'm very blessed to have um you know the customers that i have and the work that i have and then um you know i work um right now i work full-time for uh for a hot rod shop called forte's classic garage in uh, St. Pete, and then they also have afforded me the luxury of doing my own projects, you know, in my own time. You know, I have full access to the shop to do, um, you know, all the little custom paint projects and stuff, all the little art projects that I like to do. Yeah, and, and uh, um, skateboards as well, <laughs> man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Man, that's one really of the things I've got. What's They're that? They're a lot of fun. I really enjoy doing the skateboards. They're a lot of fun. Um you know, I skated when I was a kid, my kids skate and then, but like, you know, I paint a lot of, of panels and canvas and things like that and they're flat, but the skateboard just kind of has like a curve to it and there's just something to it too that's like a nostalgia that, you know, kind of brings you back to being a kid. Like, you know, cause when I was a kid, um, I couldn't always afford like the pro model board. A lot of times I'd buy a blank and I would paint it, you know, I would do something cool on it for myself you know, obviously not to the level I'm doing them now. And then, you know, the boards that I do now, you know, you wouldn't ride it, you know, they just get hung on the wall, but it's still just kind of, um, there's just like a connection there, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. Flat, I, I, like a, a flat piece of metal, for instance. Yeah. Uh, 
you know the stuff that you're painting i definitely wouldn't want to take out and ride anywhere it would end up it would end up on the wall for sure on the many walls (laughs) it's so funny because uh like when i go to car shows you know a lot of times i'll have you know artwork for sale and stuff there and uh there'll always be someone that'll come up and they'll say oh man you know i'd hate to ride that or i'd hate to mess that up skating on that and i'm like oh yeah you don't you're not going to pay, you know, four or $500 for a board to go ride. ride. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, ab- absolutely, man. So what, what got you into, you know, the level of art that you're doing now? Oh man. Uh, where I started and this, this is actually funny cause I was just talking about this with, um, with my friend, uh, uh, uh Tammy, uh, with Orion paint. Um, when I was a kid, I lived with my, I stayed with my great grandmother a lot and, um, to kind of help her. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't really able to, uh, like to do a whole lot when I was staying with her. So I would draw a lot. Well, my great uncle was in prison (laughs) and he would write letters all the time. And in those letters he would draw or, you know, he would do like these real neat, uh, lettering styles and all that stuff. And then my great aunt was also an artist, but she was more um, like landscapes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so my grandmother had paintings from her up. So as a kid, I would copy those and I would trace, you know, my great uncle's letters and uh, trace the drawings he did. And he would send pictures of like hot rods and, you know, Mickey Mouse and like all different kinds of stuff. And I would just trace all that stuff. And then... um, a little bit later, I was with my other grandmother, and um, you know, I did I did lots of model cars and that kind of stuff too. And uh, we went to a yard sale, and there was um, some catalogs, and one of them was a catalog for model cars, and it just had a bunch of pictures of cars. Mm-hmm. They were like very line drawings, and the other catalog was an Ed Roth uh, rat fink catalog. So. <laughs> I had no clue anything about who Ed Roth was. You know, I was like 10 years old, you know, eight, eight, nine, ten 10 years old. And so I would just draw these crazy things that I just thought were cool, you know? Right. Yeah. And, and you're just uh, influenced by the things around you. And of course you got influenced by one of the coolest things in the culture is Ed Roth. Exactly. Exactly. Not even knowing that it was cool, you know? And then later on when I was a teenager, I was helping my dad out and, um, I saw this car that was airbrushed and I was like, dad, you know, how'd they do that? You know, I'm obsessed with cars and in my head, I'm trying to think of how I'm going to, you know, use art and cars, but I didn't like new cars. You know, I, I, the idea of designing new cars was not interesting to me at all. Um, you know, maybe if it was like a Jetsons, you know, like, way way you know super you know 60 style super modern car maybe but you know cars in the you know late 80s and 90s were not cool you know so oh, they were not uh, visually pleasing whatsoever <laughs> but um you know uh i saw this car that was airbrushed and it just clicked in my head i was like that's what i want to do you know i want to i want to do custom paint on cars you know so uh my dad was like oh they airbrushed that Let's, you know, work with me this summer. We'll get you an airbrush. So we did. I got an airbrush, a bunch of paint. And then he was like, well, if you're going to learn how to airbrush, then you should probably learn how to pinstripe so you can outline flames and stuff too. So I did. And then the next thing I know, he's like getting me um, jobs painting dirt cars. So when I was like, you know, 15, 16, I'm painting these race cars in the garage, you know, for like a couple hundred bucks. And I think I'm killing it. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, I think I'm rich, you know, like, yeah, this absolutely. Is, this is amazing. <laughs> you know, like, you know, I, like all, you know, all my other friends are like, you know, doing whatever on the weekends. And I, you know, I made 200 bucks this weekend, you know, painting race cars. You know, my dad taught uh, me how to mow the grass one time and I found out later it was just so he could get free labor out of me. I, I feel like he might've gone down the same path. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and that's, that's kind of how it was, too, with my dad, because my dad owned the sign shop, and he did vinyl graphics. And oh, that's how cool. he had been with the race car people. And he was tired of doing jobs for those guys because they didn't really want to pay, you know. And, 
you know, like if he was to do a, a vinyl job on a car, you know, he'd have to charge them three or 400 bucks, you know, just to break even. Yeah. But if I did it with like one shot and spray paint, you know, and me being art, you know, artistic and stuff, you know, I spend all weekend doing it. You know, they loved it. And I could do it for cheap, you know. Absolutely. And then, you know, they're not having they're more apt to pay you the 200 than the the 400 that your dad's wanting to charge. Exactly. Absolutely. And so, they thought it was neat, you know, that a, a you know, a teenager did it. <laughs> so so where was all this going on? Uh, were were you in Florida at that time? No, no, no. I was in Central Arkansas. Like um, this was in Little Rock. Oh, Little Rock, Arkansas. Okay, we yeah. we took a drive through yeah. there here just recently on our way to Kentucky, trying to just get out of Texas. Actually, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm from um, I'm from Central Arkansas. I've lived like all over uh, Central Arkansas, and I've. And I've, I lived in Texas for a while. In fact, when I actually first started, my actual real legit shop was in Houston, or was in actually Texas City. Oh, okay. Yeah. Texas City, they have a really cool car show going on uh, every year. I've been out to it a couple times. And uh, one year that they did it, it's called the Lone Star Deluxe. One, they, one year that they did it, yeah. they did it in the same weekend that they were having a huge crawfish festival. So, I mean, the party was just nuts. Oh, I bet. Yeah. So, not, I spent a, lot not of time, a bad town. I spent a lot of time in Galveston. Oh, uh, yeah. When I was down. Especially Galveston. And that, in fact, that's where my daughter was born, was in Galveston. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Little Texas baby. Oh. <laughs> and, how, and how old is your daughter? I was about to say, she's about to turn 18. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. So, it tells you how long ago that was that I lived there. <laughs> <laughs> you know 17 years ago so so what uh what put you in florida then uh it's kind of a funny story going back to my dad um my dad was in the military when he got out of the military he decided he wanted to become a motorcycle mechanic and decided he wanted to move to florida just like that was just like in his head him and my mom had gotten divorced and he was just like i'm going to florida well, the motorcycle mechanic thing didn't work out. He ended up getting a job doing vinyl graphics with this company. They taught him, brought him up through the ranks. And then when he moved back to Arkansas, he took the, that knowledge and opened his own shop. Well, he would still do subcontract jobs for his old boss in Florida. And uh, he would bring me and my cousins along, you know, to do jobs and stuff. And I started doing that when I was 13. So almost every year we would come to Florida during the summer and do jobs. And, um, I just had it in my head. I was going to move to Florida eventually. And, uh, in 2014, I think, um, I had an opportunity and uh, I took it and, uh, came down to, I actually moved to Panama city beach and I went to work for a, uh, a boat manufacturer, um, all their letters and numbers and everything that they had on their boats were all airbrushed and all their boats were custom painted. I did that for a while until they started cutting my hours. <laughs> and, uh, by that time I'd had enough side jobs, you know, on my own, that I decided to open my own shop again. And, and honestly, up until recently, I've been fully self-employed, um, this whole time. And I would still be self-employed. I just, you know, I was offered a really good opportunity to work for some really awesome people. And, uh, you know, I, I also do metal fab too. And, you know, I probably do more metal fab for this shop than actually do paint work. Oh, is that right? Yeah. What, uh, so what are y'all working on in the, the shop, shop right now? Pro. Uh, the main car that I'm working on is a 69 Chevelle. And, um, it's, it's actually, it's a very, very highly customized car that we're doing. It's on a uh, roadster shop chassis. It's got a Nelson racing engine going in it. Everything's getting shaved. Um, I mean, it's just it's just a super wild car. Oh, so it's definitely going to be a grocery getter then. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it's only got 2,000 horsepower, so it's not that big of a deal. It's oh, just no, twin no. turbo. Nothing um, at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Uh, 2,000 horses. Yeah, it's insane. Um uh, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's nuts. 
and what's neat about it too is um, the owner is allowing us to be very creative for and and doesn't really care you know necessarily about the budget you know he's more interested in the car just being you know a, a, a basically a work of art uh, for instance there's vents in the door jams that from the factory would have just had like this big piece of plastic that just kind of clips in mm-hmm. you know and if it was painted and everything if you saw it like at a car show you'd be just like yeah that's just how it is you know you wouldn't think anything about it but i was i was like you know that's really kind of ugly you know maybe i could make something and so i kind of showed them what i had in mind they were like okay do it and you know i did it and they love it and basically what i did is i took the uh the same indention that's on the bottom of the door jam this factory i remade that out of steel flipped it upside down and i put it at the top of the door uh jam with just like a little opening in it and then we'll do mesh and a nice little trim ring and we'll copy that on the bottom one and then it looks almost like it's factory hmm. except for it's just really clean and it doesn't have any plastic yeah definitely Man, that's that's really cool when you get to do projects like that, especially like a. I mean, that's not a a, a small money car whatsoever. Uh, right. So then to be able to do projects like that outside of just the typical build, uh, right? That's always and, and really cool. Perfectly honest, that's not really my style of car. I'm not into muscle cars. Um, you know, I'm more into you know traditional hot rods and customs, and that's that's like the kind of stuff that I own, but what's really neat about this car is that, you know, I can be creative and I can do things like that. You know, a lot of times when we're doing muscle cars, they want it, you know, borderline factory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You don't see a whole lot of customization done with, uh, with muscle cars. And, uh, I got into a conversation about that the other day with, uh, with a friend of mine where we were talking about, you know, there's, there's some cars out there that you don't typically see made into customs. Uh, right. you know, like your, your, uh, mid fifties Chevrolets, uh, right. there's a handful of people out there that have, that have customized mid fifties, you know, that 55, 56, 57, like the tri five, right? The man of 55, you know, like you, you see a 55 done almost the same way over and over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. But when they have like a mild chop and they're shaved and they're just slams, that is just a gorgeous car. Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but you're right. Like you always see, they're always done, you know, like a, like a street racing kind of, uh, you know, what is it? Resto uh, mod. Yeah. Resto Make, mods. Yeah. Or, or borderline stock, but with like some, like some torque thrust wheels maybe, or, you know, they're usually almost pretty much about the same, you know, lowered about two inches, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. Right. And, they, you know, a small walk Chevy thrown in there and with a little cam. So they got a little noise, but nothing crazy. And, you know, pretty much kind of stock interior and, and that's just kind of how they roll. But, uh, occasionally you just see one that's like, uh, man, there's one that's got, um, I can't remember whose car it is, but it's gold metal flake. And, uh, you know, it's fully laid out. It's that car is just ridiculously gorgeous mm, i'll have to look that one up that sounds cool all, right off the bat what did chuck I'll call that and, what's that i was i was trying to tell sam what uh what did chuck call metal flake the other day on uh on the last podcast that we did with zach oh glitter yeah, man glitter man, man glitter <laughs> man That's glitter what called it. <laughs> the herpes of the custom paint world <laughs> that's what i said Glitter i goes said that everywhere. i literally said that about when i would do like arts and crafts and shit here at the house right. i was like oh i'm dealing with glitter the herpes of arts and crafts <laughs> once you get that shit somewhere it's I, everywhere yeah it spreads i have never used metal flake at my current house but there's metal flake there's a little trail <laughs> 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 right my house like along the baseboards and stuff, you can just kind of see it. The light will hit it just right. It doesn't matter how much we. It don't matter. You can let the Roomba go. You can mop. It don't matter. It's there forever. <laughs> Pretty much, it is now. It is and, now absorbed in the wall. Right. Yeah. And there's we, a couple of areas that I metal flake at the shop where I just. That's just kind of like the designated area, and those areas are just like crazy, insane. Like just flake everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> It's all, this is the party room. Right. <laughs> it's just uh, 800 different like, colors. 
<laughs> right. I shoot like almost every week, so it's like it's embedded. It's part of the property now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we had uh we had chuck and zach on uh last week and that it was funny because chuck was calling it man glitter uh because it yeah. was driving scratch insane and now zach doesn't like it either and now zach is upset with chuck too for calling it man glitter so i'm gonna <laughs> run with that it's gonna be it's right. gonna come up in conversations quite a yeah. bit <laughs> that's a that is it's a good way to piss off a custom painter to call it glitter. Yeah, I call it glitter. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> you can get glitter from the hobby store for like two bucks, you know, and like, you know, metal a lot more expensive. <laughs> yeah, metal metal flake is a lot more expensive. Uh, I'm, I'm sure of that because you, you, what do you buy it in like little half ounce jars at a time? <laughs> so I don't. Well, yeah, because you'd have to well, buy it in bulk. Yeah, I buy in bulk. I, honestly, I buy it. Um, I buy it in large, large quantities. But most of the time, when you buy it, you buy it like in a, what's called a four ounce jar. It doesn't actually weigh out to four ounces. That's just it's four fluid ounces. Um, right. But it's just like a you know like a two inch by two inch jar roughly. You know, I think um, that jar alone is roughly twenty dollars. I think right now is about you know about average. Yeah, and it does about what a quarter of a roof. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> you know how many yeah. jars I'm gonna need for the Buick? Oh so, my god, her Buick is a boat. Oh my god, you know how many jars I'm gonna um, need to do that roof? The '49 Ford that I did, you know, I did everything, you know, jams and all. Uh, we did it silver flake with with candy red over the top of it, and I want to say it took almost two pounds. Pounds, oh my God. pounds of metal flake. That's gonna be like eight <laughs> pounds on the Buick because that freaking roof is and then, long. And then how oh, that, many? Yeah, that, that, how many uh, clear coats after that? Oh man. Okay, so we cleared it. I did six coats of clear, blocked it, and then did um, three coats of candy, and then another six coats of clear, and then blocked it. And then did I think we did one more coat, one or two more coats of clear on top of that, and then cut and buffed it. Oh my god! That is wild. That car now weighs fifty more so pounds just, just like, from the paint. Oh job. yeah. So just just imagine that, but like times ten for the Buick because the Buick is a lot longer. <laughs> it's at least uh, another car and a half. Yeah. Oh my god. Car and a half. Yeah. F- Fifty nine Buick funny. it just keeps Fuck. it keeps on going. It never right. stops. Especially you know a two door coupe. It's a fairly small car, really, um, as far as old cars go. You're not making me feel any better about how much I got it. <laughs> but yeah, I, know that. I need, I need sponsorship is- now for uh, Man Glitter, Chuck, a.k.a. you. I need sponsorship. I, I could probably help you out. I could probably help you out with the flake. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. We'll also and- just have to take the Buick out to Florida one of these days. Yeah, That'd yeah. be good. Yeah, we'll let so Ryan, uh, Maybe Orion could help you out with the um, with the clear and the and candy too. Now you were telling me earlier that they sent you to a car show in Dallas here recently. Yeah, How did that go? That was a lot of fun. Um, to be honest, it's it was the summer truck and nationals, and um, going back to it wasn't really the type of cars I like per se. Sure. Um, it was mainly lifted trucks. You know what we call uh, bro dozers or honky donks. But, <laughs> I like uh, that bro dozer. I like that a lot. Yeah, I'm gonna run with but, that. Um, <laughs> but you know, there was some. There was a few hot rod trucks and and some cool stuff there. And uh, but really, the people. Um, there was a lot of really awesome people there. Um, there were two trucks that uh, had just recently got painted um, with the Orion paint. And one of them actually won best paint at the show. And uh, man, uh, SRD design or SR design, sorry, um, did it. And it's just, I mean, gorgeous, like insanely gorgeous. It was like this red, and it had a, kind of a, um, like an orange pearl. So like when the light hit it, like the edges just came alive. I mean, it was just gorgeous, just crazy gorgeous. And I'm, I'm a sucker for red anyway. And this was just like a real bright red. And so you would think it would just be like, you know, like a Viper red, like just bright red. But on the edges, like I said, it just, it just came alive. It was remarkable. Like, 
I've I've never seen that, um, and it was really neat to see. Sam's looking at like eight hundred different kinds of red right now that she wants to try to do for the Buick because it's going to be. Yeah. I'm sure it's going to end up black and red. Yeah, it's either going right. to be black and red because those are my favorite colors for one. But of course, you know everyone's like every car's been that color. I'm like I don't care. I'm going to look through every yeah, single so shade of red until I find the exact one I want. Or right. I either want to do black and red or I want to do black and purple and do a really like crazy purple flaked roof. I haven't figured that out yet. I'm I'm still going between those two colors. Honestly, uh, red and purple are my two favorite colors. <laughs> and um, I was having a hard time. So I've got, I just bought a, um, a 54 Chevy uh, sedan delivery. Oh, cool. To be like a work truck, you know, it's just for me to take to shows and pinstripe out of and stuff. And, um, and I'm just, it's honestly, it's been my daily driver since I got it except for when it's breaking, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> we all know that story, <laughs> right? Which is every other time I drive it. So that's nice. But, uh, that's what I'm going to do with it for now is I'm just, I'm going to paint it black on the bottom and I'm going to paint the roof and the, the, the delivery part of it red and, you know, and, and letter it up with my, uh, you know, with messenger custom paint, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, just use it, you know, that is like, out that is like the the iconic uh, vehicle for every right. artist I've ever known is is either and like I'll, a sedan delivery or like a panel van or something right. you know because that's a huge yeah. canvas for you. Exactly, man. I've wanted so I'm I'm pretty obsessed with '54 Chevys in general. Um, I've got a '54 Bel Air project that's like you know my long term custom project that I'm you know chopping, shaving, you know body dropping everything. Yeah. But I wanted something I could drive now, and I really wanted a 54. Well, what's funny, and I really, I mean, a 54 sedan delivery. What's funny, the very first time I came to visit St. Pete before I decided to even move here, my friend was showing me around, and she's just like, oh, yeah, and there's a hot rod shop right up here. And sitting out front of this hot rod shop was this car for sale. And I was like, man, I want that. But I knew at that time that, you know, I couldn't, there's nothing I could do about it, you know, so I don't even. I said, I just said, I want that. And she was like, you want me to turn around? And I said, no, you know, I don't even want to know how much it is. Cause even if it's cheap, you know, I can't do it right now. Yeah. It'd be heartbreaking well, if it's cheap. <laughs> right. So a little time goes on and, um, I end up going and helping that shop out and doing some work for them. And that's actually where I painted that 49 Ford, the metal flake one. Mm. And, uh, you know, I'd mentioned, I want that car. And the guy said, well, it's on consignment, but to be honest with you, he's asking too much because he's got too much in it, but the car still needs work and blah, blah, blah. So I just kind of left it alone, you know? And then, um, the guy that owns the car started coming up to the shop and hanging out from time to time. And, uh, one of the guys said there said, oh yeah, you know, messenger, he wants your car. And so the guy walked up to me and he said, you want my car? And I was like, I want it, but I'm not going to pay what you're asking. <laughs> you know? We just kind of laughed and chuckled and we kind of BS and he left and then he came back another time and he talked to me about it again. And, and, you know, he talked some numbers and I was like, you're still, you know, way out of, you know, what I could do. And, and then, uh, he came back another time and he was sitting down and he said, okay, here's what we're going to do. And he laid out a plan for me to buy this car that I couldn't refuse. And I was like, okay, you know, I guess, I guess we're going to do this. <laughs> you know? Hell so, yeah. That's so, cool. Uh, when, uh, when the seller yeah. is that, you know, interested in you, I, I've, I've yeah. been in those situations well, where the seller is like, I want you to have this car. We'll, right. we'll figure well, that out. Well, he knew out. that I was in love with it, you know, and he knew, you know, and he had had people like tire kickers and stuff, but he never really had anybody, you know, seriously interested. And he's had the car for sale for two years. You know, and this guy's in his 80s. So, you know, and he, he, he's he got a car collection at his house also, and he didn't have anywhere to park that car inside. And he had had the car painted, you know, a couple of years ago, and there's already rust bubbles coming back through from it sitting outside. And, mm -hmm. you know, and the pe uh, to be fair, the people that painted it didn't do that very good of a job. And uh, so he knew that it was going to have to be repainted and stripped down and, you know, it was going to need some repair work and, you know, that the tires were dry rotted, things like that. So, 
you know, he was ready for it to move on to a new home. And, um, you know, I've worked on it every day that I've been home <laughs> since I've had it. I've had to either fix something or I've been trying to just make it better, you know. Is it a original drivetrain? No. Um, they put a uh, – they actually put a 383 with a 400 trans behind it, and then it's got a, um, I think, a Nova rear end in it. And they did um, – they upgraded the suspension. Now, it's all factory suspension, but they upgraded it a little bit, and they did a uh, – a disc brake conversion and it's got, you know, all brand new brakes and, you know, full brake system put on it. Yeah, I was going to um, say a 383. I would hope they would go to disc brakes on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's sketchy. Yeah. But Oh yeah, it would be, uh, it would probably be a lot of fun with, with drum brakes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it wouldn't be impossible. It would definitely be, I, I need to stop before we get to Houston uh, and yeah. that's in San Antonio. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, the, but, uh, it wouldn't it be actually, impossible. It stops pretty well. You know, so what, what they did with the brakes isn't bad. Um, and it runs pretty well. It, you know, it had a few little issues. Um, whoever whoever put it together in the final, in its final form, never really tuned it very well. So we've been playing with that, getting it tuned better to where it runs better. Yeah. And I had to do a few things to it. Um, you know, it, it didn't have a carb spacer on it. So it was, if it was hot, it didn't want to start, you know, things it like would that. Get that, uh, that vapor lock kind of situation going on. Exactly. Yeah. I think we were having a little bit of an issue with that when I had the model a, mm -hmm. the, I'd have a, for one, I had a faulty fuel pump, not, not doing its job, but, uh, uh, also right. when I, I, we would be out driving all of a sudden it would just turn off and it wouldn't be overheating or anything like that, but it would just turn off. Right. <laughs> so yeah, we, we had a few issues with that model a, but it, yeah. you know, it had a, you know, hopped up little, you know, small block Chevy in it. So it wasn't, uh, anything that was hard to work on and it, it, right. it didn't have fenders or anything in it. So it was like, everything was right there available. You know, I wasn't having to uh, crawl around on around on the ground trying to fix anything on it. <laughs> yeah, we've had those cars too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, I've, we've we've been on the ground a few times with this one. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I went to a concert recently, or I was on my way to a concert, and uh, I was like, you know what, I'm going to take the Chevy. You know, it's it's a little bit of a drive, but screw it. You know, I'm going to take it. I'm going to see how it does. And I got about halfway there and uh the fuel gauge doesn't work properly and so it kind of did the little shimmy it does right before it's about to die yeah yeah so i'm I thirsty it goodbye gas <laughs> right i went into a gas station and as i'm i'm at the light about to turn into the gas station it dies mm. and i'm like shit i'm gonna have to push this you know <laughs> I, have, but, I did so that I, coming I out of lone star roundup one year <laughs> yeah <laughs> But I went to start it, and it, it started, but, it like, the starter made a crazy noise. And I was like, oh, no. So I pulled into the gas station, got gas, and, like, I'm, like, crossing my eyes, fingers, and toes, hoping this thing's going to start. And when I turn the key, uh, you know, the starter is spinning, but it's not engaging. Oh, no. And I'm no. like, crap. You know, um so like I try and I try and I try tapping on it. I try, you know, I try all the, all the things you do. Right. Yeah. And it's not doing nothing. So, um, I started to push it out, you know, cause I'm blocking a pump. And so I started to push it into a parking spot and some guy helps me. And then I called, I messaged one of the guys, uh, that's a mechanic that works at the shop who I know doesn't live that far from there. And I was like, Hey, you know, here's what's going on. You know, do you, you got any mechanic tricks up your sleeve that I don't have? And he's like, well, you know, no. Nah. He's like, you know, maybe you tap on it harder or blah, 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 and this and that. And then uh, he said, hey, I'm, you know, I'm just right around the corner. I'll just swing by. And um, I had a jack with me, but I didn't have a jack stand. So I really didn't feel comfortable. You know, <laughs> Pulling a starter. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he, brought, he, he brought jack stands with him, and we got underneath it. We pulled the starter. And uh, played with it, you know, and got it to where it was doing what it's supposed to do, put it back in. And then uh, we, re we we actually took all the shims out 
and readjusted it and uh now it starts better than ever <laughs> <laughs> and it but it just cranked right up you know <laughs> like like oh yeah so i needed i just needed you to just acknowledge me i guess <laughs> right <laughs> i just needed some intention now i'll work yeah needed you to twist these knobs for a bit (laughs) you know like i i tell a lot of people that i i was not you know i was not raised uh, a mechanic whatsoever and the majority of my knowledge of cars has been on the side of the road like figuring (laughs) it out right it sucks sometimes like you you neglect certain things because the car is just running and you're like okay cool it turns on it turns off it goes to the light and it stops when i need it to like you know and then it puts you in a situation like that and you're like fine i'll i'll finally fix this one thing that i didn't even know was wrong <laughs> right well that's uh, you know with people are always like hey oh you work on old cars you know can you fix blah blah, blah. and i'm like well yeah here's the deal you know I'm a cosmetic guy. You know, I'm a, I'm a paint and body guy. Yeah. Really. And they're like, yeah, but I see you working on, on old cars and stuff. And I said, you see me working on my old car. Mm -hmm. What you don't see is me throwing wrenches and breaking stuff and having a fit and calling real mechanics for advice (laughs) and (laughs) and all the other stuff behind the scenes, (laughs) you know, where I, you know, to make this happen. Uh, what, what I do is I cut old metal out and put new metal in and then I make it slippery and shiny. That's what I do. You know, if you need that, then let's, let's talk. But if you don't need that, then take it to a mechanic because it's right. not me. No, I, I go through the same thing. You know, everybody at my work, they see us, you know, Sam's picked me up from, from the shop a few times, uh, in the Buick. And they're like, oh, wow, you're into old cars, you know, you know, can you help me work on this? And it's like they're like 2015 GMC (laughs) truck. And I'm like, "Ah, no, like I I, I look at my own truck and I'm just like, I don't I don't know what it is. I don't know what's under this hood. So they're just like, oh, I had this one bolt for this one part. But do you know what other kind of bolt that would work for this? Because I don't really know. I've tried and I've looked and it's like, if you looked, I don't know what to tell you because I don't know either. (laughs) Hey, my husband is making a noise. What could it be? Oh, that's. That's obvious, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can't believe you didn't know that. <laughs> right. It's a 2006 Honda, that's the problem. <laughs> Bingo. Bingo, that's it's normally not, the problem. That's all you got to do. If you just get a new one, it's going to work just fine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I always I love telling people <laughs> it's the nut that's holding the steering wheel together. <laughs> right, yeah. Operator error. Exactly. Something between that steering wheel and front seat is messing this whole thing up. But uh, Messenger, it was absolutely a, a wonderful uh, conversation that we've had today. And we appreciate everything that you're doing for us as a sponsor, for one. But, you know, just being in the culture and, you know, giving me stuff to look at while I'm supposed to be at work is just uh, fantastic, man. So. My job, do my job. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're uh, you're one of the folks that I that I follow actually really closely on uh, TikTok. Um, you know, my old ass doesn't need to be on TikTok though. Traction, I'm good with it either way. <laughs> but uh, yeah, is, is there any folks out there that you'd like to give some shout outs on our show for? Um, biggest shout out would be you know Tammy Miller from Orion uh, automotive finishes. Um, you know, she's, um, she's been a major supporter. Um, and then of course, uh, you know, Chris Forte and the guys at Forte's automotive Mm. or Forte's classic garage. I call it Forte's automotive, but it's really Forte's classic garage. (laughs) You know, they've, they've been really great to me here. Um, you know, obviously, uh, give a shout out to my kids and, uh, and my family and all that. But, uh, but yeah, absolutely, man. I appreciate you being on, man. Folks, if you're listening to this on Apple, please go and leave us a rating and review. 
And if you're listening to us on Spotify, you can do the same thing on there. And as always, you know that Sama and I watch everything that we do on uh, social media very closely. So if you message us on there, you're, you know, we will answer back at some point. So leave us uh, some comments and let us know how we're doing. And at least go bother Chuck once in a while and tell him that we're doing amazing. But uh, Sam, do you have anything you want to add to today's show? Just that this episode is brought to you by Work Hard, Be Nice by Thurman Jackson Jr. and Jackson Moving Company in Austin, Texas. Um, no, I don't really have anything else. Thank you for all our listeners for the past, what, almost two years? We're at, we're at like a year and a half with this year thing. year and a half. Uh, couldn't do it without all our sponsors. Just like you, Messenger, I've had so much fun being on this one. I love everything that you're doing, and we definitely will keep sharing it. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, folks. We'll let you get back to your normal daily life of a Monday. And uh, stay wild. <laughs>